Hello, good morning. My name is Diogo Matos from the Center of Industrial Robots and in Intelligent Systems from INESCREC. Can you hear me now? Or is it a mic on or is it it's fine? Okay, so this uh, article was in collaboration with the University from Technological and Federal uh, he's, he's moving on its own, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this article was written in collaboration with the University of Paraná in Brazil. They, they awarded us and uh, said that they, have, they had a robot that they needed to, uh, for us to model. The robot, they called the Monero robot. It's a vibration-based model robot, as you can see. It is similar to the kilowatts. I don't know if anybody has ever heard about the kilowatts. The main difference is that they try to use uh, things that are really easy to obtain in the open market and they did not need it to be specially manufactured so for, the, for the, those robots. They designed this robot to go into pipes, so gas pipes, uh, water, water pipes, to see if there, were, there is any cracks, any problems, and to overall detect if there is any leakage. And they also needed it to be somewhat modular because they have several different sensors that they needed to place there in order to, for them to update, to do their measurements. Uh, so they awarded us the, and asked, asked us if we could develop a, a module for them so that they could simulate the robot and actually simulate their movement overall. As it is a vibration robot, it's not something that's not a, a differential, not an omnidirectional, it's something that's not very well known in the overall science part. So we started by creating a test bed for it, as we needed to have a ground proof to compare uh, the overall movement and our module so that we could have the, the data to do then our model. This test bed is a camera that's looking down and five uh, tags one is placed on the robot and then four in each corner of the overall area. We then did several, this camera then sends the data to a Raspberry Pi and then it is sent to a PC that has a, a small app that's just basically doing all the referential cal calculus that are needed to place all the coordinates in the same referentials and all the rotations and translation matrix that are needed. And also it, it, uh, the Raspberry Pi also has some um, some equations in order to compensate for the overall uh, lens destruction, uh, uh, distortion of the uh, of the camera. The on the image on the right, you can see the the test bed as as well as the detection of the markers that is do, done using the, the overall uh, Aruco markers library that's open source and uh, uh, used widely. Uh, as you can see, the, the system is able to detect the overall markers as well as the markers that are placed in the robot and Therefore, it is possible to model the movement of the robot in an X and Y and Z, but this is, in this case, this is not important, uh, referential. We then proceeded to do some tests. In this test, we changed the overall PWM of both the, the robot motors. So the robot has two motors that do the overall vibration and that make the robot move. Uh, we changed the PWM, meaning the relation between both motors. And this was the results we got. Um, we used the polynomial trend line to overall get the, the equation, as you can see here. And then you have the, also the fitness value of this polynomial trend line. These first um, tests were done to determine how we could, we could control the angular velocity of the robot. Um, as we can see, the, although the, in the extremities, the, 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 it is, uh, sinusoid line with the first degree, and we had a very good fitness value for the polynomial line. If we just uh, reduce the interval to minus 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 uh, PWM values, we can get a, a linear function to approximate the overall movement and angular velocity of the robot. And this is a linear fun function we then determined. It is a, a slightly less uh, uh, fitness value, but it's easier if the simulator is in somewhat uh, limited processing power. We then also move to the, to the linear velocity. 
We use the same approach and do these several different uh, measurements with, with different PWMs. However, we concluded that uh, linear velocity is pretty much con constant. And it's basically, it depends on the material where the robot is moving. Meaning if the, if the material is uh, rigid enough and it does not deform with, with the vibration, the robot has a higher velocity. If the material is less rigid, the, ro the robot will struggle more to actually move and have a, a slower velocity. So, as I was saying, uh, so we did test on, on glass and wood, and we also propose that in our future work to abort different types of materials so that we could have a, a more complex uh, simulation module in this case. Uh, for now, we did, did use glass and uh, wood and plastic mainly because it's what's on the, what they are using. We need. We are focusing this to the application that we are using on, on Panama and not probably and we will do that in future work. So, as I was saying, vibration robots uh, are more affordable than most uh, than other types of robots to do small works. And so, and it's uh, something that's not readily awarded. There's very little work on it. This, the results of this test actually are allowed us to predict the, the movement of the robot, both in angular velocity and linear velocity. And then it was able to feed to different simulation uh, simulators in order for them to actually simulate the robot and actually simulate an entire swarm of the robots. Uh, as I was saying, uh, it was in Weber, it, it's future work, but it was already in Weber and the, and the sim, and sim, different simulated environments. And, as I was saying, the locomotion of this robot, as it was actually designed, it is optimized for glass surfaces and also wood surfaces. Uh, however, we could uh, we could expand this to other surfaces as the need requires, and it's just a question of uh, testing uh, uh, on the on the surfaces and repeating the method to obtain the module. Uh, thank you. Um, Thank you very much for your presentation. There are questions? No, what? There are any questions? I, I, I'm not well understood, but what are the dimension of this robot? Oh, I have those here. Uh, let me just go back so, I, so people at Zoom can see it. if I change this from presentation, they may not be able. You have over there the dimensions, both in X, Y, and Z oh, on okay. the figure on the right. And the actuator or by the electric actuator? Uh, the electric actu actuator, uh, I don't recall from, but it is written on the article. I don't the recall from. Oh, the, 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 vibra the vibration. There are those who, the, the MI mini motors. Mini the motors. Mini oh, motors. They're okay. just. They are two. The, it has three contact points, and two of them vibrate. In the in the application, you told about uh, uh, pipe inspection, something like that. But this vibration, uh, I, I think, uh, are useful only for flat uh, uh, surface. No, uh, they actually are already used in, in types, and they had good oh, results with okay. them. The, they, what they sometimes sometimes they do is just uh, they shorten a bit the uh, points of the motor, so they don't. It has all. It has to have three all, always three points of contact with the the pipe in this case, but it it is uh, already being studied to be used both in gas pipes and I think okay. water pipes, if I'm not mistaken, mainly to detect leaks if okay. there's leakage from anywhere. Thank you.